This is your average household refractor telescope. And this is the world's largest refractor telescope. What's up, Orbiters? It's Nick from the Orbital Alliance. It's great to see you guys. Today, you can tell I'm not in my studio. I am actually on location at the Yerkes Observatory in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, which if you don't know where that is, it's in the Midwest of the United States, at the southern end of the state of Wisconsin. I'll show you here on the map. And it's a beautiful location, a getaway destination for, for people. They take weekends away. It actually is home to the world's largest refracting telescope. This particular telescope is under restoration, and so is the rest of the building. So I decided to reach out to the folks at Yerkes and ask if I could come here and explore the building and check out the telescope, because it's gonna blow my mind. So let's go inside and see the restoration work that they're doing on the facility and then learn about the gigantic telescope that they have in that dome. So come on with me. All right guys, so we're inside the observatory now. So come with me and we're gonna just kind of walk around and explore the space a little bit. I'll show you some of the rooms that are in here. And also I'm gonna show you the renovations that are being done. There are some workers working on the building right now as we speak, as we're here. So you'll see some people, you see a lot of construction debris and equipment around. So we're gonna be extra careful to respect the space. Um, but I want you guys to be able to see uh, the history of the building and the renovations that are being done. And then we'll go into the main observatory where we can actually see the big telescope. So come on with me. So I don't actually know a ton of the details myself. However, this is kind of just an experiential sort of adventure, uh, but you can see the architecture of the, of the building itself is actually um, quite historic looking. Uh, you don't find this in you know, your everyday suburban home, but uh, I think this is a remarkable testament to the period that this, this place was built in. Um, but right now, as of course, they're, they're trying to restore it and maintain it and keep it kind of alive. Um, so it takes a lot of work and a lot of actual money to be donated to help fund those restorations and to keep this place going well into the future. Um, let's walk in this way and we'll check out just poke our heads in some of the rooms a little bit. Oh, look at that. See, there's some equipment. There's the rooms are, I'm assuming, are going to be repurposed and redesigned. Um, and over here, we got some desks and books. This looks like a classroom. Lots of astronomical equipment laying around here. Lots of books, reference books. And you just wonder which scientific geniuses from around the world showed up here just to do science. Um, I just love the wonder. You hear they're doing some work restoring this, this beautiful marble, which is awesome. And there's some ancillary wings here, like some satellite wings, which I believe actually have other observatories other than the main dome. Um, and they have, I think, more modern telescopes posted up here that, that get used as well. You can see from these aerial shots from the outside that there are these extra domes around the campus that you can see, and that we're kind of this far wing off the side, which I believe is the east side. Um, so. Really cool. Let's turn back around and walk down this way. I can't help but notice how cool this like really old kind of like grandfather clock is right here. This, uh, if you come in close, you can listen. I mean, that's just cool. This is a beautiful meeting room here. Oh yeah, a book on uh, Hubble's legacy, Edwin Hubble. The Hubble Space Telescope was named after Edwin Hubble. So they're clearly already honoring these like really big people here by leaving literature about them. Um, and then look behind you, look at this. This picture here shows uh, the original telescope in its original condition in the main observatory. And there's all these people in here from uh, 1921. But who's this right here? A famous man with crazy hair and a mustache. That there would be Albert Einstein. That's pretty crazy. That's that's just a hint of the, the legacy that's in this building. This is where the business end of the building is. Okay, so this room here, it seems like this room is focused on the history and also the reasoning and the plan for the restoration. So let's go look at that real quick. Pardon the creaky floor, the, the old floor is uh, very rickety, but um, other posters kind of describing the values and the things they're trying to do, the things they're preserving here in the observatory. An artist, he paints with lakes and wooded slopes, with lawns and banks and forest-covered hills, with mountainsides and ocean views. 
clearly the emphasis on the landscape actually contributing to the facility. And, you know, as you can see, it's just a remarkable property. And there's, of course, the, the telescope, which is the pearl and the clam, but the rest of it is, uh, you know, it's what holds it all together. It's, it makes you feel good about being here and it makes you excited to come do science or to research or to um, make discoveries. It's clear that purpose is, is really important in this restoration process. So I find that really amazing. All right, so we ended up in the doors that take us underneath the main observatory under the giant telescope. There's a lot of construction equipment. This looks like a staging area. I'm most interested in this brick construct here in the middle. Certainly probably important or covering up some sort of structural beams for the telescope right above it, because I'd have to assume that the weight is just astronomical. Uh, yeah, I, no, sorry, I'll, I'll see myself out. This is, I think I would, uh, I'd pay exorbitant amounts of money to have something like this in my house, <laughs> but I just don't, uh, I don't want to know what the price tag is, <laughs> but this is incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming at some point they're going to line this with books and objects of significance uh, just to make it kind of complete. You get the, the radiator and the, and the floor here, the modern day air conditioner. <laughs> Look at the contrast between the two. Um, I love that. And it, it just feels like you're in a movie. Physical periodicals, astronomical periodicals, general science periodicals. Again, you have to wonder who was in here trying to find reference material for their research projects. All right, now let's go to the good stuff. Let's go upstairs. I've got a light. I'm gonna turn this on because it gets kind of dark in this hallway. Don't trip, Mr. Cameraman. Oh, well, there's already uh, a friend here who's waiting for us. <laughs> hey, what's up, Einstein? <laughs> I visited Yerkes 100 years ago this summer. Well, I wonder when this was from necessarily, but August is actually this summer. 1921 is when he was here. So yes, 2021, this is indeed 100 years. Uh, post your selfie with Albert for a chance to win a VIP behind the scenes tour with Einstein. All right, guys, so we're about to head right into the primary observatory, the main observatory, with the world's largest refracting telescope. Follow me in, and let's go check it out. I mean, can you believe this? How massive this thing is? I mean, this thing is insane, uh, you guys. I, uh, I wish you could be standing here next to me to just get a sense of the, the scale that this thing has. So as you can see though, right now, it is covered in plastic. <laughs> uh, that's probably the most noticeable thing. So they are covering up to protect it from dust and debris. So unfortunately we can't see the telescope in its full state uh, or usable state. Um, and most of this room here is covered in, in uh, tarps and dust. So um, it's kind of an under construction sort of phase. But I also think that's really special and unique to be able to see it in this uh, in between. So just for reference, there is a spiral staircase on the side, which I'm assuming is for operation and, and maintenance. And that looks to be somewhere around three stories high, which is, which is pretty crazy. It's a giant tube uh, going across the, the whole scope and whole breadth of the room. That is the refracting telescope. There are glass elements all throughout that scope that are just, they're the, the actual optics that are, would collect light, refract it into a cone, come out the other end for the eyepiece. So you put in a big fat eyepiece in there and uh, you can see a planet, see distant galaxies, see things in, in space with really, really great detail. From my understanding, this is still the largest refracting telescope in the world, even though this was built in the 1800s, the late 1800s. As technology advanced, things got uh, moved towards mirrors and less towards glass refraction. You're able to get more light with mirrors than you are with uh, smaller refracting lenses. So just looking at the dome around the room, you can just see how this whole thing is a mechanical monstrosity. It is. Um, it has two doors over here on the side that open up so the scope can see out, and then the whole dome rotates on, on a wheel system. Um, and then the telescope, of course, uses weights and gears and motors. There's pulley systems in here to maneuver it so you can slew the telescope to the exact object that you want to look at. So there's a lot of educational influence here. This whole facility was funded by schools um, and a lot of other Organizations and educational centers use this place to do research, even still to this day, to use that. Well, not really to this day, because of course, you know, it's 
it's under a tarp, but <laughs> but you can feel, you can smell the history, even just the 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 look, the the way light comes through the old class windows uh, has a special allure to it. Being in here feels like there's a sense of magic. All right, so I couldn't help but notice this over here, this wooden ladder uh, or set of stairs on wheels. If I am correct, this would be how what they would move around to get to the eyepiece of the telescope because it's so big. Um, and sometimes the thing you're looking at, the angle of the scope might not be low enough for you to it, like be on the ground and look at it that you want to tilt a little bit this way and you have to get up to this other end. So you wheel this thing around to the eyepiece. Like, what is that? It could be up to 20 feet in the air. It just has age written all over it. And maybe that's a later construction, but that looks like a very original piece of equipment. And I, I think that's pretty neat. So there's a desk over there that has some buttons and meters and controls. So that's pretty neat. So let's go take a look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, one more thing. <laughs> this right here, that's like an eyepiece adapter. This tube, this is just like what you have at home. This is like your focuser. Um, so if you're familiar with telescopes at home, there's a piece on the end of your telescope uh, where you know you can drop your eyepiece in and you can actually twist the knob so it expands. I wonder if you can like turn it. Yeah, it goes up and down, in and out. There's a fine focus and a, uh, a coarse focus adjustment. Light would come up from the telescope, bounce back out in your eyepiece, straighten your eye or your imaging equipment. That's really cool. All right, let's head over there, that, this side over here. Look at this desk. It has controls on it um, for lighting. Uh, it looks like slewing the telescope. It has uh, the dome and the floor adjustments. It's got clocks just for uh, your own reference. So you actually know what time of day it is. So you know, you're accurate to finding your actual objects that you're looking for. Um, it's mostly construction dust on here, but this just looks antique. And uh, I can't get over how this just contributes to the, the sense of history that is just lingering in this room. So um, I would love to learn more about this at some point, but definitely a cool piece of equipment. I wish we could take it out for a spin, but that's just unfortunately not gonna be the reality today. But uh, maybe at some point in the future, next year when uh, it's opened up and ready to go for us again. All right, everybody, so this is Dennis Kois, who is the director of Yerkes Observatory. So Dennis, thank you so much for making the time thanks, to be with us. Thanks for coming out. We're really happy to have you here and check it all out and share it with all your viewers. Totally, this is amazing. So what Dennis is gonna do is just to inform us a little bit on uh, what the history of the facility is, what their plans for the future are, and he'll also tell you a little bit how you can get involved and help with the renovations themselves and how you can learn more. So Dennis, if you can give me sort of the 60 second rundown, what is the history of the Yerkes Observatory? Well, I think as you're showing everyone in your video and you know, sort of as you're touring around, it is this amazing architectural confection of a building built at the uh, end of the century. So 1895-ish was when the building was built. The telescope, the big one that's behind us, saw first light in 1897. Um, and it was built by the University of Chicago. So this was sort of the era when, if you were a serious research university, you had to basically build an observatory. Yeah. Um, the University of Chicago located it up here. We're actually standing in Wisconsin, obviously, not in no. Illinois, right. um, for a couple of reasons. One was Chicago at that time was just full of coal, soot, and pollution. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't so much light pollution issues, it was actual pollution pollution issues. They, you know, <laughs> you can see through the haze. Uh, two, the Great Chicago Fire had happened not long before, and so they wanted to get the observatory out of the city. Yeah. Um, their donor wanted it out of the city, uh, Yerkes, who's it's named after Mr. Charles Yerkes, and their donors at, as a university were up here around Lake Geneva. Yeah. This just made sense as a location, so uh, they had a rail line up here, they, they decided to put it up here, uh, got it built, and you know, after seeing first light in 1897, for a brief period, it was uh, the largest telescope uh, and the largest observatory in the world. It's still the largest refracting telescope in the world, which, as we were saying, is a little bit like saying my car's got the best steam engine ever made. Right. It's old tech, yeah. but still kind of cool. <laughs> to have the chance to be uh, managing a historic site like this uh, certainly probably feels like a lot of responsibility to, to make sure it's not only functional for the public, but functional for professionals and in the science community that are looking to still use it, right? That's probably yeah. a big yeah. demand. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah we're, we're kind of mixing a lot of things together here. So. What's happened is the University of Chicago decided that they were gonna close the site down. It, you know, it's a historic uh, observatory. You know, it's a beautiful building, but it didn't make a lot of sense for a you know, tier one research university to be operating. They're working on new partnership scopes in Chile and elsewhere. 
Um, and so they decided they would shut it down and basically a local group of donors got together and formed a foundation to take ownership of it from the university. So just last year, the university handed off uh, the building, 50 acres of grounds, which were all designed by uh, the firm Olmsted and Olmsted, the same firm that designed Central Park uh, in New York City, designed a lot of uh, city parks around the country. And then all the equipment that came with the building and the landscape uh, all got transferred to this private foundation. So that's what I run, and we're in the midst of renovating it. There's lots of work going on to sort of preserve the building, preserve the equipment, restore the historic nature of what's here, mm -hmm. and also then think about like what this is gonna mean going forward. Why would people come here? What would they do here? What's it, what's it mean? What's it for? Sure. But there's in particular a certain historic figure who has spent time here. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about who that may have been? There, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch. So, yeah. You know, if you're, I mean, you know, if you're into astronomy, even if you're just maybe a little aware of astronomy, some of the names that came through this place, um, you know, are so a who's who of turn of the century America, and then sort of trailing into later days. So you know, founded by George Ellery Hale, so the grandfather of American astronomy, yeah. who you know some of your folks will know, went on to found the world's largest telescope four times in a row. Mm -hmm. He just kept moving to the next biggest best thing. It's like Moore's <laughs> law, but for optics. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything just kept getting better. So, uh -huh. um, you know, so he came through here. Um, you had people, uh, you know, sort of as varied as. Uh, you know, Hubble worked here for many, many years. Yeah. Um, you know, this isn't where he discovered redshift or right. yeah. you know, sort of decided the universe was expanding. That was at Lowell, but he, um, you know, did spend some serious time here and, and did some, you know, sort of preliminary precursor work and his PhD while he was here. You had folks uh, like Gerard Cooper come through, you know, the Cooper Belt. Mm -hmm. Pluto obviously has been in the news a lot the last, you know, couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he came through here, spent a lot of his career here. Uh, you had uh, Subrahamian Chandrasekhar, who won a Nobel Prize mm -hmm. uh, in, fit, you know, astrophysics. And then later in life, you had people like Carl Sagan, who spent six years here um, doing work. He was never on staff, but was here as sort of a, you know, researcher and a yeah. doctoral student and stuff, doing some of his early science. So mm -hmm. you had those kinds of folks, and then you had visitors coming in. Uh, the most famous of which I think probably is Einstein. Right, yeah. <laughs> when he uh, came to the U.S. for the first time in 1921, he has to see two things in the U.S., Niagara Falls and Yerkes Observatory. Okay. So, <laughs> so he was here literally just for an afternoon. Uh, he stood in this room and, you know, stood, talked about the telescope, got the lay of the land from the staff. If you talk to some of the locals, they, by this point, the story is he was here for, you know, 20 years and, you know, figured out the theory of relativity while here. Yeah, exactly. Right. Just an afternoon. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, it's a cool story still. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, this is, uh, just, again, just so historic and... and you know, some of your folks may hear some background noise because obviously there's work going on. We've got roofers here. We're putting solar panels on the roof. There's yeah. squeaky wheels uh, being <laughs> greased. So lots of things happen. So with the renovation, then, uh, renewable energy is a value of yours. Correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we want to be sustainable. It's a beautiful landscape. It's on a historic lake that's, you know, a valuable watershed. So, you know, we've done things like install electric chargers for, you know, cars. We've... Um, that I'll be running off solar panels on the roof, 75 panels up there. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're trying to you know, modernize this and think about the next 100 years. I love it. Um, and then the last thing I want to just ask you is, you know, what can people do to help get involved in the renovations? And <laughs> that one's doing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So the last thing I want to ask you is how can people help get involved with the renovations and the future of the observatory? And if they want to learn more, uh, how could they get yeah. in touch with you with the facility? Well, so it, it's really easy. So it's yerkesobservatory.org. You know, for now, we're, we have so much going on. We've just got a website. We're not really doing social or anything yet. We will be soon. Um, but they can go on there. There's an info email address that comes straight in and, and we'll see those. And there's a way they can donate right on the website. So, you know, right. all those resources go straight into conserving, preserving, restoring what's here and getting it ready will be open to the public by next summer. Great. So people That's will be able to visit really soon. Cool. Thank you so much, Dennis. This is amazing. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for taking the time to come out. Yeah, it's great. So check out Yerkes Observatory, go to the website, and you can even donate to help make this uh, even better than it was originally envisioned to. So this is, this is how you can help get involved in the astronomical community. Uh, even a small donation, I'm sure, would, would make a huge difference. We so. love them all. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Cool, well thanks Dennis. All right, thank you. Oh my goodness, wasn't that amazing? That was so cool. Such an experience to kind of get to stand next to a monument 
astronomical significance. I'm so privileged to be able to be here to meet Dennis. Uh, Dennis, thank you for your time. Thank you for your generosity, allowing us to kind of explore the space for ourselves. Uh, but more importantly, we want to support you and your mission here to renovate this building and set it up for 100, 200 more years of astronomical learning and exploring. So just grateful to have the chance to be here. If you guys, again, have questions, go ahead and check out their website. I'll link it in the description below and you can learn all you want and you can donate to the cause as well to help restore this beautiful historic building. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you learned something, be sure to drop a like below and also don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell. It's been great to hang out with you guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you all on the other side.